Hey everybody, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find the RSS feed from your WordPress site and a couple tips and tricks on what you can do with it and how to find various sub feeds of your site. So in case you don't know what an RSS feed is, RSS stands for Real Simple Syndication and it is a way for third-party readers or third-party software to pull the content from your site without actually going to your site. So for example, there's a lot of people who have what's called an RSS reader and they put in a bunch of RSS links in there and then when they open up their reader, the software goes out and automatically pulls all the content from all the various websites and then they can view it inside the reader and they don't actually have to open an internet browser ever. So they can just view all your content in the reader and not go to your website. That's one of the, the main uses of an RSS feed. There's also various integrations you can do with Zapier and RSS feeds. Uh, if you have an autoresponder software, you can set it up so that if you post a post on WordPress, it then generates an email that's broadcast to your entire list via the RSS feed. There's a lot of uses for it, but sometimes it can be hard to find if you don't know where to look. So what we do is we open our WordPress page, we go to the home page, and quite often, if you have permalinks enabled, your feed, RSS feed, will be at your domain name forward slash feed forward slash. And this is the feed for wp-phd, which is our demo site. And this is all the content on there. So a feed is usually comprised of the title of the post, the date, and an excerpt of the post. Sometimes it'll be the entire content. Sometimes it'll be just an excerpt. Sometimes it'll have images, sometimes it won't. Really, there's a lot of ways you can customize this feed using plugins, but the default feed will look something like this. And in the WordPress codex, which is basically the WordPress documentation, there's a lot of cool information about feeds. And we're on the WordPress, uh, WordPress feeds page of the WordPress documentation. And you can find feeds for various different types of WordPress feeds. There's RSS, RSS2, RDF, and Atom. So if you're trying to integrate with something and they require a specific feed, if they require the Atom feed, this would be what you add to your, your URL to get that Atom feed, and then you can use that link in that software that you're integrating. Now, if you scroll down a little bit further, you can actually generate feeds based on categories and tags. So all you have to do is add this to your URL. The number 42 is a category ID, and you can find that ID if you go back into your WordPress dashboard, hover over posts, click on categories, and we have a bunch of categories created here. Click on the one that you want the feed for, or that you want the ID for, click on the edit link, and the number that appears up here, it says tag ID, even though it's a category ID. That number right there is the ID for that category. So now if we do, if we take this piece of code and we try to open that feed in our, for our WordPress site, replace the category with the number two, now it's going to create the feed for that specific category. Now I don't have anything posted in there, but this is how that feed would look. It has the correct category name, which was business. As you can see back in our dashboard, business is the name of the category. And this is how you can create a feed for individual categories on your site. And you can do the same with individual tags by just using the tag name. You can create feeds with multiple categories just by including a comma between the numbers or multiple tags by including a comma between the tag names. You can even leave out categories, which you can see here. So this, this example would show a feed for everything on your website except for the category ID 123. That's what that minus in front of it denotes. So it'll show everything except for the category 123. And you can create a feed for the author. If you have various authors, you may want to create a feed for each one. You do do that with this piece of code, this um, forward slash author and the author's name. This is what you'd replace with the author's username. 
and that will pull up a feed for all that author's content. Now, there's a lot of plugins that help you customize the RSS feeds, and there's even themes that have this functionality built right in. So you don't really have to ever worry about it. The only time you really want to worry about it is if you're integrating with a third-party software like Zapier and you need the feed for whatever reason, or if you're integrating with your autoresponder and you need the feed to create automatic broadcast emails. For that kind of stuff, these feeds are super useful, and that is how you find the feed, and there's a lot to choose from, but the one you're going to use most often is quite simply this one, your domain name forward slash feed forward slash and that's going to show a listing of all the posts on your site and keep in mind that by default feeds only contain posts not pages so i hope this video helps you my name is bjorn allpass from wp learning lab please make sure you like this video if it helped you subscribe to our youtube channel check out our social media feeds and check out wplearninglab.com where i read about wordpress every single day talk to you soon